And um, now there are a number of pastors in West Africa, they have done their homework and they were doing quite well. So I hope here too in East Africa that you're doing well too. And the message is God's grace and warning to motivate us to turn away from sins. Now, some people think that to help people to turn away from their sins, they have to yell at people or they have to just use the law and say, you have to do this, you must do this, or God will punish you. Uh, so people think that they have to use uh, the law only to motivate people to change. And I want to say that um, you know, the biblical teaching is that the grace of God is the greatest motivation. The grace of God is the motiva most important motivation. But we also have the law to remind us and to warn us if we don't obey uh, the law. Uh, so, you know, the main motivation should be that God loves me so much, therefore I want to obey God. Okay, so that should be the main motivation. Okay, now please, if you can see me, please let me know with WhatsApp. Okay, and God bless you. Okay, now here I have a few items here and I want to go through this freely. Okay, now if we want to motivate people not to tell lies, uh, what can we do? Now, uh, I have talked about the, the outline of a, a message and the suggested outline is that first there is an interpretation of the a biblical passage and then there is negative and positive example to tell people of those people who don't obey God and, and those people who obey God and what will uh, happen. Um, and then God's nature and, and grace is how God's nature, His qualities and His grace will motivate us to obey Him. And then why? Why some people don't obey? And then uh, reminder and warning. What will happen if people don't obey? Let me say this again. So God's grace and warning to motivate us to turn away from sins that God's nature and grace should be our main motivation to motivate us to obey God. And even when we want to tell people to turn away from their sins, when we want to turn people away from their sins, we want to use grace as the main motivation. And here we have a few items that I will first talk about and then I will talk about different passages. And uh, so now let me go through the outline that I would like you to do. To, uh, to use. Now actually I can show you the outline here that this outline is a practical outline. A, an outline, each point has its point and reason. First, interpretation of the biblical passage. We want to explain the passage. Explain it word by word, phrase by phrase. Of course the important words that we want people to understand the biblical passage. And then examples of how people don't live out and do live out this particular nature of God. And we'll, we'll look at that, how some people don't obey and some people do obey and live out God's nature. And then God's nature and grace would be the main motivation that He is so beautiful, His nature is so wonderful. Uh, Okay, I have started already. I have started already. Okay, and then why some people don't live out this particular nature of God and why? The emphasis here is why. Why some people don't follow God's way. Uh, the reason why we want to talk about the why is so that people understand that when uh, the, the reason behind uh, uh, the fact that they don't obey God so that they know the reason and then so they can take care of that problem. And then reminder and warning from God's commandment that when we disobey God, there will be uh, bad consequences. There can be destruction to our life. And then how to live out this particular nature of God and then challenge to people. Okay, So we'll go back 
uh, to here. So if we want to write uh, messages about uh, diff these different topics, okay, not to tell a lie. Okay, now uh, the negative and positive example of people are, you know, there are some people who, for instance, some people who serve God and they, they, they really are diligent, they do a lot of things, but then when some Christians discover that they are telling lies, that they are not really doing what they are doing, or when they are cheating on money, or when they are sinning, they're doing something in secret. They're not telling the lie. Uh, they're not telling the truth. They're telling lies. What will happen? What will happen is that then the people would, you know, would say, I cannot trust that person anymore because he's telling lies. He's not telling the truth. So that's, this is a negative example of people, of, uh, people who tell lies. And then positive examples that there are people who really tell the truth all the time. They always tell the truth, even if the truth will bring them trouble. For instance, they have done something wrong and then they will admit it totally. Then that is a good example. And people will say, well, this is a wonderful person. Now, what I'm telling you is, not, is that it's not so hard to do the assignment uh, to fulfill the requirement I suggest. And after you do 10 assignments satisfactory, uh, satisfactory assignment, then I can give you the first level certificate. So, and then uh, God's nature and grace, okay? So when we look at this quality, now telling a lie is the negative uh, quality, is a sin. And then the positive would be the opposite. What is the opposite? The opposite is tell the truth all the time and tell the truth in love. Tell the truth so that it will help people, that will strengthen people and glorify God. That, that is um, God. He always tell the truth and He always give people uh, uh, hope. He doesn't, you know, He, he always gives, gives hope to people. So when He tells the truth, I'm going to help you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to raise your life up to a high level. He is telling the truth. And so we trust God because He has been so trustworthy in all His promises, in all His prophecies. He has always fulfilled His prophecy. So we know that God is trustworthy. So that is His nature and His grace. He, he always blesses us with His word of promise and He would also change the lives of people. He would work in the hearts of people so that they will tell the truth. So it's God who, who gives people the quality to tell the truth. It's God who, excuse me, it's God who changed people's lives so that they will tell the truth. So that is the nature of God, that God is a God who motivates people to tell the truth, okay? And so that is his nature. And also when people tell the truth, God is very happy. God will bless the person. God will uh, make the, the person's life go higher and higher. He will use that person. So that's God's nature and grace. He, he's happy with people who tell the truth and he will motivate Christians to tell the truth. Now it's very important that we can talk about how God motivates us. That since we became a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives in us because the, uh, the Holy Spirit is holy. So when He lives in us, He will tell us about our sins. He will tell us to obey Him and that will give us motivation. The Holy Spirit will continue to remind us. And then if we are about to tell a lie, then the Holy Spirit will convict us of our sin and we'll feel bad because of our, uh, our intention to tell a lie. And then we will, you know, in the heart we have the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And if we obey the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, yes, I want to obey you. I don't want to tell a lie. I want to tell the truth. Then God is very happy and He will give us joy and He will give us strength to tell the truth. And then when we tell the truth, He will bless us. Okay, so that's God's great nature and grace. And uh, He has given Christians courage to tell the truth, even when they are persecuted, they are really put into 
big trouble where they are persecuted for Jesus' sake and yet they still tell the truth and say, Jesus is the Savior, Jesus is God, I want to trust in God all the time and God loves you and I care about you too. There are some Christians who continue to, to uh, tell the truth even when they are persecuted and even if they are threatened with, with uh, punishment or death. Okay, and then reminder and warning. Satan is the father of liars. So if we tell lies, then we are calling Satan our father and then uh, the, Satan will control the person. So the warning is that if we tell lies, then we become a, ch a child of Satan. We don't want to become a child of Satan. So we, you know, we want to tell the truth. And also if a person tell the truth and I mean tell a lie and doesn't repent, he can lose his salvation. If he continue to tell lies and, and he doesn't repent, he can lose his salvation. Now, what if some people says, some people say, well, how about if a person tell, a li tell lies and then he repents and then Jesus forgives him and then he tell lies again later. So, uh, so what will happen to him? Okay, so they say, well, he tell lies and then he will repent and then God will forgive him. So he think that it's okay to tell lies. But I want to say this. There are, always, there are always consequences of sin. When people continue to tell lies, God would not like him. God would not have favor upon him and God would not bless him. And people will lose trust in him. People will say, I don't know whether I can trust this person. And people will say, I cannot trust him because he tells lies. And then if he's serving God, the people don't trust him. His ministry will not go well. So if people think that, well, I tell lies and then I will uh, ask God to forg forgive me, then it will be okay. No, it's not okay because sins are destructive. Sins are destructive. There will be destruction coming from our sins. So this is warning. And if a person continues to tell lies, he can lose his salvation. Okay, and then um, how? How can we tell the truth? Okay, now it's very important that we learn to to teach people how. And the way to teach people how is to observe our life. Observe how we tell lies. Now, I have told lies before and now I, I don't want to tell any lie at all. I want to tell the truth all the time even if there are serious consequences because I know that God will not like that and there will be serious consequences. So I've noticed that when I want to tell a lie that in my heart, I would have the intention that I would want to escape some punishment and then I want to tell a lie. But the Holy Spirit would move in the heart, in my heart and tell me not to tell the lie and I would feel very uncomfortable. I would feel guilty. And so the Holy Spirit continues to work in my life. And then what can we do? What we can do is we'll say, Yes, Lord, I know that it's not right to tell a lie. Please forgive me. So we, when we realize we have an intention to tell a lie, then we ask God to forgive us and then we'll to, uh, get, ask God to give us strength and then we'll say, I choose to tell the truth and trust that God will bless me. I trust that God will bless me when I tell the truth. So I am not afraid to tell the truth. So that is... Uh, the internal process, how to turn our heart from telling a lie to telling the truth. So we tell ourselves, so we talk to ourselves. I understand we have an intention to tell a lie and I know that is destructive. Therefore, I pray and say, Lord, please help me to walk according to your way. And I want to be pleased, be pleasing to you. I want to, uh, to be following you faithfully. Please help me that I choose to tell the truth. So that is a very important how. And also there are other ways that to meditate on the Word of God to see how people, they don't tell the truth and then what will happen to them and how God it will be happy with people who tell the truth. And also think about the past, how God has changed our lives, how He has worked in our lives and we say, yes, I want to, I want to do things that is pleasing to God. I don't want to offend God at all. Okay. And then challenge. Okay, challenge is saying, well, uh, 
all people have the sometimes have the tendency to want to tell a lie but this would cause God to be very unhappy so when we understand that we'll say Lord please help me please help me not to tell lies please help me to tell the truth to trust in God to obey God so that I won't tell a lie so that I will tell the truth and then God will help me okay so I'm I'm showing you how it's not so difficult to write an outline uh, to write a sermon uh, following my way uh, this way is not just my way it's also a biblical way because it every part of it has to do with the biblical teaching how to motivate people to tell the truth okay now let me go through this very uh, quickly okay to tell the truth and then so we interpret the passage if the passage is that you know that uh, Satan is the father of those who tell lies of the liars then we say um, you know that the passage says that if a person tell lies then Satan becomes his father Satan will have control over his life he's following Satan's way and and God doesn't like that and also uh, when we sin what happened is Satan will come to steal kill and destroy and destroy the whole person Satan would come to destroy the whole person so that interpret the, the passage that when we tell lies that the person become a child of Satan and the, we don't want to become a child of Satan because Satan will only come to destroy and then examples of people who tell lies and they lose the faith of other people and examples of people who tell the truth and then they get the respect of people and then God's nature he is holy there is no darkness in him he is totally holy he he only tell the truth and his truth is filled with love his truth is filled with his promises he will always bless people who follow him so he promised that and it comes true when we follow God he will bless us so that is his nature and his his uh, grace now it's very important to talk about how God changes people so when we are born again the Holy Spirit comes to live in our heart and when the Holy Spirit comes to live in our heart, we'll feel joy and strength and motivation and holiness. Uh, anyone who sincerely believes in Jesus, they will experience this change. When they sincerely repent of their sins and believe that there is a God, that God is real, and start to read the Bible, they will find that God will work in their life. They become a born-again Christian. And then when they are born again, the Holy Spirit will continue to talk to him, to tell him to tr tell the truth and not to tell lies. And whenever he tells lies, he will feel very uncomfortable. The Holy Spirit will convict him of his sin. And so the Holy Spirit will work in our heart to change us, to change us so that we will obey him and, and um, tell the truth. And also when we tell the truth, God is very happy and he will bless our life. He will give us blessing on earth now and also in forever in the future. And he will raise us up. He will use our life. So um, that's God's nature and grace. And then why do some people still tell lies? Because they want to run away from trouble because they've done something wrong. They think that telling a lie is the best way out or they want to get some benefit, some benefit by telling lies, but that is very destructive. And also some people just, you know, tell lies for fun. Some people gossip about other people for fun to tell lies about other people. And then reminder and warning that God um, warns us. If we tell lies, we can become the child of Satan and God doesn't like that. And there will be, um, uh, that uh, Satan, will, Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy. And then how? So we pay attention to our inner life, how we have the tendency to tell lies. And then we'll say, this is destructive. If I tell lies, it's destructive. And then I pray to God for strength and for forgiveness. Please give me strength so that I would choose to tell the truth. And I trust that God will bless me when I tell the truth. And then um, how, how do I, I mean, how, uh, I'm sorry, challenge to people that we challenge to people and say, 
that when you tell the truth, God is happy with you. Can you start to change your life? Okay, and and tell the truth all the time, and then and then you you are free in your conscience. A free conscience is a free gift. It's a big gift. Then we'll be happy all the time. Then we'll be saying, "Wow, God is with me. God is blessing me," and then we'll feel very. Uh, very happy all the time. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> now we go to the next one, lust. Now I'm going to show you the next slide so that you can see how I go through this point so that it's easier for you to follow, to lust. Okay, so if we follow this outline, there is a passage that says that he who sows the flesh will reap destruction from the flesh. So when we sow to the lust, then we'll reap destruction. So uh, it's like sowing, sowing seed. If you sow uh, mustard seed, you'll have the mustard plants. If you sow um, wheat, you'll get wheat. But if we sow sins, then we'll reap death and destruction. A negative and positive example. Now, it's, many men say that it's too hard to overcome the lust. They say, when I see a beautiful woman, I just cannot stop having lust over, uh, over her. I, uh, it's too hard to stop that. And uh, when then, uh, some people say, <clears throat> when I see the pornography online, it's very hard to stop. So this is a negative example. And then these people, and they, when they continue to stay in lust, when they put themselves into temptation, they would watch the pornography online and they lust over women. What happened is they will, uh, they will reap destruction. The whole life they will feel, they feel dirty. They will, be, they will feel dirty inside and, and they don't feel um, they are worthy of, uh, to come to God and they feel very guilty. And it's no good. It's, he has no strength. If a person continues to lust, and positive examples that when we take care of lust and choose to turn away. You know, when I see a sexy woman, I would choose to turn away and choose not to think about her. And choose to think godly thoughts. Because I know that lust will destroy me. So I don't want my life to be destroyed by lust. So that's example. And then the biblical example would be like Joseph in the Old Testament. That when the mistress tried to tempt her, tempt him, he would run away, even though he was caught and then put into prison later. Uh, but God blessed him because he followed God, he obeys God. Okay, God's nature and grace. God is pure and holy. In him there is no lust, no darkness at all. He's all clean. When he looks at people, he always wants to bless people. He never has lust over people. And in heaven, there's no more lust. That's beautiful, isn't it? In heaven, there is no more lust. In heaven, when we see all the beautiful ladies, we don't have lust. It's all clean thoughts. It's so beautiful. So we, we, we all need to tell ourselves, living without lust is beautiful. Then we can respect other people and we can respect ourselves. So God's nature is holy, there is no lust, it's all clean, and He has the ability to put this holiness into people. He has the ability to do that. Grace, okay, His grace, when we are born again, the Holy Spirit comes into us. He will work in our lives to give us the desire to, to turn away from sins, to tell us that sins are destructive, to tell us to turn away from, from women. But very often people just... They will, uh, they will say, I will just have fun for now, I'll repent later. And they didn't realize that there is destruction when they have the lust right now. So we want to tell ourselves, if we have lust, there is destruction. So I don't want to live in sin. I want to turn away from sin. So God's nature and grace. grace will work. God's grace is that He will keep working on people's life to turn away from Turn us away from sins and lust, and then, um, and then when uh, when we obey him and have a clean, uh, have clean thoughts, then he will bless our life, 
and He will bless us with good marriage or good single life. You know, that is better than ever. Now, some people are married, but they don't build up the relationship. They cannot have good communication with their spouse, and they look for other women because other women will not nag them. And they say, well, the other women, they, are, they don't nag me, they just have fun with me. And my wife, he, she always nags me. Now, so we want to handle any problem with our wife so that we can build up a good relationship with her. We want to listen to her, listen to our wife, and respond to our wife, to her needs, care about her, and listen to her, her, uh, her feelings. If she is unhappy, we listen to her and care about her and want to bless her all the time. That's what I want to do to my wife. And she feels very happy with me. She always feels very happy with me. And that way, we enjoy each other. We enjoy each other. We enjoy whatever we do to each other. We enjoy being together anytime. So that is a blessing from God that we can enjoy our marriage or single life. Uh, that even when we're single, you know, uh, after my first wife passed away and she went to heaven, and then I had two years that I was not married. And in those two years, I did not feel lonely. I just spent time loving God, praising God every day. I enjoy that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're so wonderful. You're so good. Hallelujah. And God gave me the strong presence of God. And I, when I led meetings, the presence of God was very powerful, very strong. So God can bless us when we are single or when we are married. And God will reward us. And then why do some people, they don't, you know, they fall into lust. The reason is they put themselves in a temptation. They, they, um, uh, they, you know, they look at women, they think about women, they uh, watch pornography online, and they think that it is fun, but actually it's destruction. Uh, or people, they are lonely, so they want to have lust to, f to feel that loneliness. And then reminder and warning that lust, if we fall into lust, it will bring all kinds of destruction. A person having lust all the time, he would feel very dirty. He would feel very unclean. He would have no strength in his ministry. He would, his heart would con convict him. We accuse him when he continued to, to live in sins. And he would always say, I'm a dirty person. I dare not preach. I, uh, I'm not practicing what I preach. So, uh, so that is warning that when we live in lust, it will be destruction. And uh, then we have a, a guilty conscience. And then how? How can we overcome lust? First, we realize God loves me. God loves me very much. And I'm precious. If I follow God, my life will go higher and higher. So I ask God to forgive me and I obey God, God will live my life to a higher level. So, uh, as I said, the three, four points of motivation. First, God loves us very much. Second, we are very important. Third, when we trust in God, we love God, we have a good relationship with Him and obey Him and, and serve Him, He's very happy and He'll bless us. And then four, if we don't trust in Him, we, we don't have a good relationship with Him, we don't obey and don't uh, serve Him and, and live in sin, then there will be always destruction. So if we believe that God is in control of everything, we'll say, if I follow Him and obey Him, it will be the best for my life. So the how is very important to understand. Now for any message, you can use these four points that is very important to understand that to trust in God and obey God is the best strategy. That when we trust in Him and obey Him and serve Him, then He'll be very happy to bless me. So that is the theory. And then the how is when we have the thought of lust, when we see a woman or see some pornography, immediately we delete it. Immediately we turn away from the woman. We don't want to think about the woman. We want to think about the holiness of God, the holiness of heaven. We want to think about how our lives can go higher and higher so that I can follow God, I can live in joy, I can live in strength, with strength. I want to turn away from sin so that I have a clear conscience and have the strength to 
follow God and obey God, okay? Now, then we go to gossip, okay? If we want to preach a, gossip, uh, a message about gossip, that, that uh, every idle word will be put to judgment, to judge whether we are righteous by our deeds, by our words, or we are wicked by our words. So, gossip. So, if want to, we want to preach against gossip, then first we interpret the passage that any words we say, any idle words we say, it will be brought to judgment. What we say will be brought to judgment, that God will judge us, and God will point out our sins, and, and so uh, any kind of sin will have, uh, we have to face God's judgment. So we want to, to turn away from the, from the sins, because uh, every idle word, every word that we say, it can, you know, will be brought up in the judgment in front of everyone in the world. So we want to say, I'm sorry for my sins. I want to turn away from my sins because every word I say, uh, negative words about, uh, of, about other people, that when we gossip, every idle word we say will be brought to judgment. Okay, examples. Now, it's true that there are many Christians who gossip. There are many Christians who gossip. Now, one time I was in charge of a fellowship group in a church. I was an assistant pastor, and one of my responsibility is to take care of one uh, youth group. And there are other groups I take care of, and preaching, and visiting, and different responsibility. And in that one group, there was one uh, sister who brought a young man to the, to the group. And a young man came, and then what happened was, uh, you know, he told me that people gossip about him and the lady who brought her, him. That they were gossiping that they were dating. But he said, it's not happening. And people are gossiping before anything happened. And later he said, I have to leave because people, you know, I heard things about myself that I did not do. And he's very tired and sick of the people who gossip. So this is a negative example of gossiping, that it can turn people away from the church and from God. So that's negative example, gossiping. And I also heard that there are people who gossip in, uh, that in a, you know, after they have church, they will go out and have lunch, and then they will gossip about the church, about people in the church. There are some people who just want to, look at the clothing of people and then they go uh, go, uh, go to talk to the friends or, uh, and say how, how ugly are those dresses uh, or uh, how the person's uh, behavior. So they like to look at things of people and then they want to gossip. This is a very, very bad habit of people. We, you know, people are not, uh, you know, we, we they are not our responsibility to talk about the, the faults. If we want to talk about the faults, we want to go to them and talk with them, and not to talk behind the back. And uh, so I've heard, you know, even I have heard uh, ministers who gossip uh, that they, you know, it become a habit when we, you know, when ministers have to talk about the church members. Uh, now we do have to talk about the church members because we want to find out how we can help the person, we can have to discuss. But when we discuss, we want to do it like this. We want to do it in a way that is out of love. Out of love, I talk about the person so that I can help the person. Not to gossip about the person, not to have fun talking about the person, but we want to uh, talk about how we can help the person. So that is legitimate to talk about how to help someone without despising the person. If we see someone have problems, instead of despising them, looking, upon, looking down upon them, we want to say, I want to have mercy on this person. So this is positive example that we, when we talk about people, that we want to talk about how we help the person if we have the responsibility to help the person. Okay, and then God's nature. 
God's nature is that He always tell the truth. He always say things, you know, to benefit people. He doesn't tell someone else about someone other's problem to gossip about the person. Now, if he tells someone, he wants that person to handle the problem of this person. Uh, but he doesn't do it for fun. God doesn't take pleasure in people who who have sinned. That God is not pleased with that. God is very sad. So that's very important. If we notice that our brothers and sisters have sinned, we, f- we feel sad. That is normal. That is saying, I'm sorry that he has fall into, fallen into sin. I, don't want, I want to help the person to, to, uh, to not to sin anymore instead of gossiping about the person. So, so that is the right way, not to gossip about the person. So God's nature is he doesn't gossip. He wants to help. And God's grace is he changed people's hearts so that people would tell the truth. So that people would want to say things positive about people. Say, so people will want to just to discuss how to help someone, not to gossip about the person. So that's God's grace. And then when we tell the truth all the time, God is very happy with us. God will bless us. God will bless our life. When He sees that we are telling the truth, God is very happy with us. He will, he will bless us. Okay, so why? Why do people gossip? Many people gossip for fun. They just want to do it for fun. They want to uh, they want talk about other people. They, they feel it's, uh, you know, it's their entertainment. The entertainment is to talk about the bad things of people. So we want to say that, no, Lord, I don't want to talk about the bad things of other people because when I talk about bad things of other people, when I judge other people, I will also be judged. So, but many people, they... Um, they would take it, you know, as uh, for fun and also they want to uh, make friends with some people. You know, some people make friends with other people by telling something secret about another person. That he wants to make friends with A and then he would tell A about the bad things of B and then uh, A would think that he trusts him, therefore he tells things about B. Now, this is not a good way to gain friendship. We don't want to gain friendship by telling gossip, by gossiping. Uh, We want to have good friendship that we help these people, bless these people, we are nice to these people, and then they see that we are nice people, and then they will have good friendship with us. We don't want to build up friendship by gossiping. So some people, they gossip to, to make friends. And uh, okay, and then also another the reason is because words come out so easily, so quickly. So many people don't think before they talk. So we want to learn to think before we talk. We want to think, oh, is this uh, beneficial to the people who, who hear this? If I tell this to someone, if he hears this, does this benefit the person? Uh, if it involves someone's faults, I don't want to tell the person. I want to tell things that would help this person, would strengthen this person, okay? And then reminder and warning. The warning is that any, if we tell, if we gossip, that these words will be presented in front of God in the judgment time, and God is not happy with us, and God will judge us. And then how? You know, the Bible says that Whatever we are filled with, it will come out. That when we are filled with negative things, it will come out. The negative things will, will come out. So if we are filled with good thoughts for people, if we are filled with uh, thoughts of blessing people, if we, feel we, we are filled with thoughts of love, I want to help people, I want to bless people, then the words will come out that we want to help people. Whatever we say will help people. So that's the how. The main thing is that our heart is filled with positive thoughts of love. I want to bless people. I want to glorify God. I want to edify people. And then we pay attention to when we have thoughts about, negative thoughts about people. And then we'll say, if I have negative thoughts about these people, I would think about how I can help this person. How can I help him? 
how can I approach this person and talk to this person in a nice way to help him to overcome this problem instead of trying to gossip. Now, if we cannot handle it, we can talk to a pastor and ask for advice or ask a pastor to handle it. It's best that we can talk to the person ourselves. But if we cannot do that, then we can ask a pastor to help us to resolve this problem. So that's the how. When we have the thought of gossiping, in, immediately we'll say, Lord, please forgive me. I don't want to tell, I don't want to gossip. I want to uh, be uh, helpful to this person. I want to love this person, care about this person. So Lord, please help me. Help me and pray for forgiveness and strength. And then we'll say words of, of uh, positive words to encourage the person or to find solutions. Now, sometimes when people have problems, we need to confront them, but we can confront them in a gentle way. For instance, we can say, I've heard this thing happen. Now, first we can say some positive thing about the person, if we can think of it. We can say, you have been a nice person, you have loved God, I noticed that you love God, and uh, I have thank God for you. Now, I have heard something uh, that you've done, and uh, can you tell me about it? And what do you think about it? And do you want to change it? If, we don't, if you don't change, what will happen? And how can you change it? So these are ways to guide a person to change. This is confrontation, but it's a very gentle confrontation. So we can talk about how, I mean, how we can change that uh, by asking God to give us wisdom to help the person. Instead of gossiping, we want to approach a person and tell the person face to face. That's what God wants us to do. If the person doesn't listen, then we'll find one or two and talk with the person. If the person doesn't listen, then we tell the church to handle it. Okay, and then challenge. Can we start to have, tell no, have no gossiping at all? Gossiping destroys a church. Very often when some people are unhappy about a church, they will gossip in a church. Instead of gossiping, we should approach the pastor and say, I've noticed this thing happening in the church. What can we do? We want to do something to uh, correct this situation. What can I do? Instead of gossiping, we want to approach the pastor, the leader to find a solution instead of gossiping. Can we st stop gossiping and start to change? Okay. Now we go back to another one, steal. Okay. The one wants to want to have a message about stealing and uh, you know the Bible does say that if we owe some people's money we can never get out until the last penny is paid so we if we steal some money from people God will pursue us we have to repent of our sins and pay back the money and so uh, so when we you know, some people think it's okay to steal. Now, I want to say this, that we have helped many groups to buy equipment. The equipment is for watching the training so that you can do better in ministry. But many people don't take it seriously. They think that I just get the equipment and then I can do whatever I want. You know, what, uh, what you have to face is that you have to face God Himself. You have to face God yourself, that you you, if people just get the equipment and then they just use it for themselves, they have to face God. And if the people continue to do that without repentance, it can bring destruction to the person. God is not pleased with the person. And God can punish. And the most serious scenario, if someone is always doing that, always taking advantage of people and never repents, there might be something wrong with their faith and they might lose salvation. So it can happen that people can lose salvation because they are stealing from everyone. So I hope that everyone who has equipment will use it for its purpose and not to steal God's money. Okay, examples. That there are examples of people who steal from the church, even pastors. Now why do they steal from the church? They say, I'm in short of money. I I just take some money and next week I'll put it in, but next week they don't have the money and then they'll say, I need some more and they, uh, one day I'll pay back. 
And what happened is, instead of asking God for the provision, they will use their own way to steal money. And it's very serious. It's very serious. Some people went to hell and then they said that they saw people in a church, uh, in a hell, in hell that have stolen from the church. And they go to hell for that. So that's very uh, terrible examples. And then good examples of people that there are some people who give all the money for God. They use up all the money for God and they, they trust in God for provision. Even though they have not much money, God continue provide, continues to provide for them so they don't have to worry. So they, they are faithful in the use of money. Okay, God's nature and grace. God's nature, He, he never steals. He always gives to people. Everything comes from God. So every good thing in the whole world comes from Him. Everything comes from Him. He's prosperous. He's abundant. He has the abundance of everything. He has everything. So He doesn't need to steal. And His grace, He would, he would give blessings to His people who love Him, those who seek His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to Him. So He would give to those who are faithful, who love Him. When people love Him, He will give to them things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and uh, things that human mind cannot think of. So when people love Him, He will give to them. He never steals from people. So He always gives to people and He, he moves in the heart of people so that they won't steal. So that they will, not only they won't steal, they will do good things to people. They will give to people. And then when people are faithful in the use of money, then God is very happy with them. And then why people don't, why people steal? Well, people think, you know, I'm in short of money, so I have to steal. Um, you know, God really has a way to provide for us. Even if we have to stay in hunger, we pray to God, God, please provide for me. God can open a way to provide for us. So, I hope that we all will say, even when I'm very poor, I will not steal, and I will continue trusting God, and God will provide for me. And why people don't, uh, why people steal? Another reason is that they don't trust that God will provide for them. Another reason is that some people just don't love God. They don't follow God. Therefore, they don't have the blessings of God. So we want to love God and obey God and love Him all the time. And He will open our hearts so that we'll find ways how to, how, how to um, make money, how to earn money. Okay, and then reminder and warning that when we steal, that until we have paid the last penny, uh, we cannot get out from the money. So we, the debt will be after us. So it's a serious warning. And then also some people, they continue to steal without repentance they can lose their salvation. So how not to steal and how also to give. Instead of stealing, we want to give. First, now the four points motivation again. I know that God loves me. Uh, I'm very precious in Him. When I love Him and, and uh, obey Him and serve Him, He'll bless me. And if I don't obey Him and don't serve Him, then there will be destruction. So I say, yes, when I trust in Him, He will provide for me. So I, we follow God. We obey God so that He will bless us. So that's very important that we see that uh, it's very important for us to obey God and, and then He will provide for us. Okay, and then when we have the desire to steal, we'll say, when I steal, God will be very unhappy and God will pursue me and punish me. I don't want to do that. Let me use some examples of mine. Be after I became a Christian, I, uh, the Holy Spirit prompts my heart and I became sensitive to sins. And, and there were times when people gave me too much change. It happens many times in my life. Or some people, you know, they, uh, I, I bought something and they gave me too much or uh, they give me too much change back. I will give it back to them. 
I would say to them, I'm a Christian, so I don't want to take this from you. And one time I worked in the place, and for two weeks I did not work. But the company still gave me a paycheck. And then I said, I did not work on those days. I'll return it to you because I'm a Christian. I love God, I obey God. I don't want to take the money from you. So I gave the money back, the check back to them. And uh, so these are examples that I would, you know, I would not to, I would not want to steal. Now another example in Hong Kong is like this: when we drive, and then go to a restaurant, and sometimes a, a restaurant or the or the uh, mall has a shopping uh, has a parking lot, and then we can have free parking. For instance, if we spend. $200, we might have 200 Hong Kong, Hong Kong dollars, not US dollars. 200 Hong Kong dollars, and then we can have one hour parking. And then, but we ate and we spent more than one hour. And then the owner of the restaurant say, I will give you another receipt that is uh, $300 or $400, and then you can have two hours parking free. And I said, I won't, I don't want it. I just want my receipt. I don't want anything more. So I will not take anything more than what is right. Even it's a small thing. Because if I do that one day in a, in, a, in a final judgment, God will say to me, why did you take that money from the, par uh, from the parking lot, from the shopping mall? And also paying tax. I'd rather pay more. If I'm not sure about something, I'd rather pay more so that God will not say you steal from the tax uh, 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 from the government. So anything I don't want to steal, I don't want to get any uh, any money that doesn't belong to me. So I hope that you will do the same. That you understand that when we steal from people, God is very unhappy, and God will can punish us. Okay, and then challenge. Can we start? Can we uh, stop stealing and start to do good to people? Do good to people to glorify God. Okay, now we go to this passage here, Acts 5 1.